Okay, so we're gonna make the muffaletta sandwich. The original recipe calls for sourdough bread, but I prefer to use uh, focaccia. So I'm gonna show you how I make my focaccia. What I have here is one beer and one cup of water. And I've already added my sugar and two tablespoons of olive oil. Put that in the bowl. Then I add about two and a half tablespoons of yeast dry yeast that the original recipe calls for fresh, but I uh, don't have any fresh yeast on hand. And we'll give that a stir. Let the yeast dissolve. Give that a couple minutes. You can see our yeast is starting to get a little foamy. And I'm gonna add an egg white. I'm using um, four cups of bread flour, four cups of all-purpose flour. Put about half of it in there. Give it a stir. And this time I'm going to add my two tablespoons of salt. So I'm going to add my baked potato. I had this uh, cooked in the microwave and peel the skin, of course, and I just sliced it up in little slices. I'm going to add that to my dough. Incorporate more flour. Force to a half a cup at a time. Well, the flowers come up the side a little bit, so I'm going to scrape this down. My rubber spatula. And add some more flour. Okay, you can see the dough is quite sticky. You know, it's by feel. You, you want it sticky, but not too dry. So it's been about oh, 10 or 12 minutes that I've been adding uh, flour. I didn't add the last half cup. I feel like in the winter, the flour is a little bit drier, so you might want to go a little bit less on certain recipes. And now I'm going to cover this, put this in a warm oven, and let it rise for about 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, so when I said uh, a warm oven, I turned my oven on around 200 degrees and then turn it off. Don't forget to turn your oven off. So it, it just stays warm enough that uh, you can see this is risen and doubled in bulk. And you won't be able to handle it with your hand. You'll have to scrape it out with a spatula like this. It's a pretty sticky dough. Uh, my... Pan, not pan, but my God dang it, casserole that I'm using <laughs> is roughly 11 by 14. And you see how I oil it, press it down. Potato here. Okay, I'm going to cover that with plastic and let that rise for another 45 minutes or so. All right, so in a processor, I have about four stocks of uh, celery. I'm going to pulse that a little bit. Add my green onion. Close that. And now my olives with some of the brine from the clamata I used the garlic and I added a little bit of uh, gardenera a little more to it. and now I'm gonna add my olive oil while I pulse it I'll 
scrape down the sides a little bit, give it another pulse, and that's pretty much it. Alright, it's been about 45 minutes. I'm going to remove the plastic and then perforate, not perforate, but put my fingerprints around. some oil on in the recipe it's calling for tomato and olive on top but that's just uh, for a focaccia recipe this is just going to be my bread and I'm going to roast these three red peppers on the grill turning every five minutes and this goes in the oven at 450 degrees hey here we are in the middle of a blizzard in northwest Indiana I'm gonna put my peppers on here and like I said I'm gonna turn it every five minutes or so let them blacken up all right it's been about 20 minutes i've had this in a 450 degree oven starting to brown on top it looks good i think we're done it's been about 20 minutes you see they're blacking all the way around i'm going to put them in a metal bowl you could put them in a paper bag but i prefer this and i'm going to cover it with the plate all right so we're going to remove the skin from the blackened peppers you see the skin just comes right off so I usually split it in half like that. Try to get most of the seeds out. Roll it over, take the back of a knife, drag it on there. You don't wanna wash these uh, with water or rinse them with water because you'll rinse a lot of that delicious pepper oil off it. And I'll cut this in the strips, and then we're gonna start to assemb assemble the uh, muffaletta. Okay, this is about the trickiest part of this recipe: is trying to cut it in half. Get a start here. Just gonna go halfway in. Come around. says to take out some of this dough or the bread we'll do a little bit and so first thing we do we spread our relish over it we made the, the olives we've got the spread I have a little bit left we're gonna put that between the cheese and the salami this one you can tear it you can cut it however you want to do it you could use bottled uh, red peppers to save time for ham but I like uh, to add a little ham with the salami overlap it a little bit Side edge. I want to gyp somebody no meat. Are you cutting? Right, we're going to take the remaining relish that we have. Spread that evenly. Put the 
cheese on top of that, and then finish with the red pepper. Put uh, a layer of the provolone cheese and then topped it with the uh, red pepper strips. Now we're gonna place the top back on. We're gonna press this down. We could wrap it in um, plastic wrap. It's supposed to wait like six hours to have a piece, but as if. <laughs> okay, we're good. Okay, here's a slice, a cross section. You can see how it looks. And uh, here's one of my hot peps, as my brother Bill likes to call them. Uh, I'll be having a video on that. These are Hungarian hot peppers. It's a simple brine that I have them uh, soaking.